everybody. So this is David Sarita, and this is a this is probably the most profound story I believe that's happening in news media, um, which is the sudden appearing and vanishing of whole stars and or planets, um, which is which is remarkable, utterly remarkable phenomenon to see that physicists are acknowledging that since the 1950s, they have witnessed whole stars, which they can't confirm are stars or planets, that have suddenly just appeared visible to our telescopes and then they vanish. They, they don't become detectable in the infrared, they simply vanish. Which means, people, we live in a hyper-dimensional solar system and universe. Which means there, there are moments where these these whole stars or planets suddenly can appear and disappear. Hence, the miracle of the sun at Fatima, October 13th, 1917. And hence, the appearing of planet Vulcan, which would have the closest orbit to the sun, closer than Mercury, that appeared, was visible, and then disappeared. So, what we, what we have here, I want you to watch this physicist, Dr. Beatrice Villarreal, describing the sudden appearing and disappearing of nine stars, April 12, 1950. That was something also that we are still working with, because when you work with the Vasco project, the main thing is that we use plates from the early 1950s when there were no satellites in the sky. This is like, a, um, it's like, imagine you have a sky that is completely clean from all human condemnation. No space debris, because today you have like millions of pieces that are blinking, uh, or blinking pieces of space debris. And uh, you have so much of garbage outside the Earth. While if you go back to these early images, it was clean. So the very first human object in space was the Russian Sputnik satellite. That was 1957, am I right? Yes. So before that, there wouldn't have been any artificial human objects in space, correct? Exactly, unless there were some black programs that they will not tell us about. And what have you found? Obviously, the slides that you're talking about, these are glass plate slides. What observatory slides were you using? So we were using um, glass or like digitized glass plates so they have actually digitized all these images or not all many of them from the palomar observatory which is in california so, it's so a, that's on the west coast of the united states exactly and so we have used those uh, and we compare them to pan stars which is uh, from 2013 and 2015 this uh, 10 years ago and we compared the images of the sky and we looked for why we were looking for vanishing stars. Suddenly one day, and this actually for as a fun thing, this happened exactly the same week as the pandemic started in Europe. Uh, that I found this image of nine stars that were there on the 12th of April 1950 and that were not there again and couldn't be seen there half an hour earlier either. So there you go. She's talking about nine stars that were visible and then became invisible. Nine whole stars and or planets. So watch what happens. I, I go to the Smithsonian Magazine and I find the story and this is what it looks like, a real photograph that she's talking about. This is a different case. I couldn't find the um, actual photographs of the nine stars appearing and disappearing. But this is a single star. We can see it right here on the left. And over on the right, sometime later, it, it vanished completely. And that means it vanished also from all optical wavelengths, including infrared. So you, what this really means, <laughs> we live in a hyperdimensional universe where there are the sudden appearing and disappearing of, of course, a planet or a star is an enormous, enormous size object. So what this means is, that if you go back to the miracle of the sun at Fatima in Portugal in 1917, we may have had one of these sudden appearing and vanishing events. And if you go back to your planet Vulcan, planet Vulcan, let me just show you what planet Vulcan is. So when you Google uh, planet Vulcan, 
and you can see that planet Vulcan was, it's called a hypothetical planet because it eluded astronomers the same way. And Beatrice doesn't seem to talk about planet Vulcan. And I've, I've looked on the websites. I've looked everywhere. They don't seem to make the connection. But planet Vulcan was, um, it was actually, here's where the story is. The, in 1840, Francois Arago, director of the Paris Observatory, suggests to mathematician Urbain Leveria that he work on the topic of Mercury's orbit around the sun. And while he's looking at, this, at the sun, he's, he's studying um, Mercury transits, which in case are periodic, um, quite rare events. They don't, they, don't happen, <clears throat> they don't happen every day. We could go into transits. I don't want to deviate too much. But when we come in here... We'll come to the period where Le Verrier sees this, this new planet, planet Vulcan, hence Spock and Star Trek, etc., goes around the sun right about the 20-day mark. So it has a period of 20 days when it's going around the sun. So that means we know, we've known about these elusive bodies, <laughs> planetary star bodies, for a very long time elusive meaning they're not with us all the time it's almost like we're, we're fish underwater and something pops through the surface of the background of space and we see it and then it's gone but where does it go to i mean it's an entire entire um, planetary or stellar body so what i did is i mapped her event on my model which is in my movie um where to next and what I do is I take, I put it into my model based on my wife, who died August the 9th, 2021, and calls out my name audibly, shockingly loud, at 591 days after her death. And with 591 days after her death, divided by the golden ratio, which is what she told me to do, 1.618, oh, 339887. I get the exact 99.999% accurate to the orbital period of Earth around the sun, 365.258, and what we record is 365.256, and the decimals just keep going to the right. Now, our timekeeping on Earth is not 100%, because every year <clears throat> there are deviations as long as 45 minutes, 30 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes. There's no such thing as a hundred percent like a Swiss watch orbital periods for any of the planets actually. There are slight, slight deviations in, in the math. So that means that we have a perfect harmony of 591 to the golden ratio to Earth and I divide by the golden ratio again. I'm just using the repeat function on my calculator and I'll get the orbital period of Venus accurate to 98%. Divided by the golden ratio, again, I get, it. I get a hypothetical orbit for planet 13951, which is really 140 full days. And I document this in the movie as this body being responsible because it lines up perfectly with the event of the miracle of the sun at Fatima, Portugal, October 13th, 1917. It also lines up per perfectly on the lunar calendar periodic to Jesus's ascension day 40 days after the Easter window. So I'm going to divide by the gold ratio again and I'm going to get the orbit of Mercury accurate. So you can compare this number to Mercury's orbit right above. 87.969 is Mercury's orbit. We can see the accuracy is very very high in this formula. Divided by the golden ratio again I get this planet of the in the cherubim which is which is the uh, eighth level of the angelic. This is all in my movie, Where To Next. And then divided by the golden ratio again, I get the orbital period of the seraph, which is the period of time Jesus lived on the earth. He lived on the earth um, right around 33 years. Notice 32.93 is really uh, rounded off 33 years. Divided by the golden ratio again, I get the orbital period of planet Vulcan. And, and that's remarkable that I'm, I'm, all I'm doing is using the repeat function on my calculator. And 591 times the golden ratio takes me to the outer, outer solar system. So what I do is I take the date of the beginning of Fatima, because Fatima begins 
on May 13, 1917, the Mother Mary comes from a point in space-time and appears to these three children in Fatima, Portugal, and begins the period of every the 13th of every month, we from that point on coming to October 13th, which is the 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 miracle of the sun that was witnessed by over 60,000 people that no astronomer to this day has ever resolved. Now watch what happens. I'm proposing that May 13th is when this hyperdimensional planet star body appears and then it will disappear after the, the miracle of the sun at some point, October 13th, 1917. So remember, these, these stars appear according to these physicists and then they disappear and they have a period of time where they're visible and then they're invisible. So I'm taking May 13th, 1917 to the date of vanishing star event of the nine spheres. Notice that nine spheres disappeared. Notice that I have, um, according to Dante's model, I have the nine levels of the angelic planets which were shown to Dante above the solar system's um, known nine spheres. Um, so we have a correlation of nines. She said nine spheres disappeared. April the 12th, 1950, they appeared and disappeared. Notice that that's two days after Easter Sunday. And interestingly, that year, both the Catholic and the um, Orthodox churches celebrated Easter the same day. So there's Easter and Easter Sunday. So this is this is two days after Easter. So when I calculate how many days passed between May 13th, 1917 and April 12th, 1950, the date that the nine stars appeared and disappeared, is 12,022 days divided by, I take that number, divided by the orbital period of Earth, 365.256, equals 32,9139. Now, notice that I can just take that number and it matches perfectly to the harmony of the order of my model because that's the period of time that Jesus lived on the earth and we have two markers in Jesus' life. We have the star of Bethlehem, which was probably one of these hyperdimensional stars appearing to mark his birth. And on the cross... There was an eclipse of something, but it wasn't the moon and the sun, but there was an eclipse of something that, that produced the three hours of darkness on the cross at the at the 33 year mark. So notice the harmony is 33 years. And notice this is 33 years from May 13th, 1917 to Beatrice's nine spheres disappearing. So they're about 33 years. So all I have to do is take the number and the calculation which is, um, again, I'll show you what it looks like. So I go 12,022 days between the two dates divided by 365.256 for the orbital period of Earth equals my 32,913909. Look, look how close that number is to my model. I mean, the accuracy is, 99, is, is actually 99.9%. .9%. That's what the accuracy is. And in fact, when this particular planet, when, when, when Earth experiences this much time, 32.9139, um, uh, then this planet will experience 365. So it forms an inverse mathematically. So it's like a figure eight. It's creating a bond between Earth and and planet Sarah. So in this time period of 32.9139 years on Earth that passed between the two events, planet Seraph will experience 365 years. You see what's happening? So I'm going to take this number times the golden ratio 1.618033988877. And it equals my next position, the cherub. Look at the accuracy. My, my number is 53.29. This number is 53.255. Right? And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to multiply by the golden ratio again. And now I'm going to get Mercury. Look at my accuracy on Mercury. 86169 to 87969. I mean, it, it's incredibly close. By the golden ratio again. 
my accuracy for the, the, the seventh level of the angelic thrones is remarkable. 139.516 to 139.425 times the golden ratio. Again, I'm going to get the orbit of Venus. Look at the accuracy. I mean, that's, that's like 99% of the orbit of Venus. Times the golden ratio again, I'm going to get 365 for Earth as opposed to 365, 256. So my accuracy for Earth, this is how you do it. It's really simple. I just take the number I got divided by 365.256. My accuracy is 99.93%. That's incredible. All of this by mapping the the beginning of Fatima, May 13th, 1917, to Beatrice's nine vanishing stars, April 12th, 1950. I don't know what to say, but what I can say is there is an absolute periodic harmonic between these sudden appearing and vanishing events to the harmony of the order of the lower solar system and the upper angelic solar system. I mean, I'm I'm dumbfounded. I mean, I wish I could get her to see this, but uh, anyway, to to really learn this, go to davidsarita.co and see the movie Where to Next Part One, Part Two, and I'm working on Part Three and Part Four.